Please turn with me to your Bibles. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. In this evening, we are going to meditate the repentance. The yesterday we meditate the God's wonderful gift is faith. Faith is God's gift. But today we are going to look the second gifts, the marvelous and wonderful gifts is God has given us. It is repentance. Our Lord Jesus Christ taught us how to pray. In the fifth petition, says, Forgive us our transgressors as we forgive those who transpass against us. But this is showing the repentance we need to ask repentance from to the Lord. The repentance must come from the Lord, not from anywhere else. Even though in this Acts chapter 5, verse 31, also very clearly prescribe us, the gods need to be give the repentance to Israelites. But the particularly we could see the repentance is not given to all. Those who are privileged, or those who are his people, only the God is giving the repentance to, the, to them. Oh dear, my friends, in this evening, we are going to think, are we really the blessed people or not? When we sing psalm, the blessed are those who are blessed people can receive the repentance from the Lord. The repentance is simply as one-time action, not as simply the one-time accent, but as that which is to encompass the entire of the believer's life, the Martin Luther said. Mr. Watson said, the repentance is a grace of God's spirit, whereby a sinner is inwardly humbled and visibly reformed. The repentance take place not only when a sinner is converted to Christ, but every day of a believer's life in Christ. But that the Bible and the reformers are very clearly saying to us, the repentance is from the Lord and the repentance is the gift for his people. My dear friends, if you are the privileged people, we will receive the repentance from the Lord. Watson says again, if you, are going to, if you are going to fly, the birds need to fly, they have a two wings. They can't, the birds cannot fly with the one thing, wing. The two wings is repentance and faith. This is must have to fly to heaven. We seen this yesterday, the faith. In this evening we are going to look on repentance. The when God is give us repentance, we could see, the people could see, the outwardly the people could see some fruits in it. There is a, the, if God give us repentance, something the people could see in us, the mark of the 
repent and saw. The first thing I would like to bring, the sight of sin. Oh, in our repentance, if God give us repentance, we could see our own inability. And open our eyes. When God is giving us the repentance, God will open our eyes to see our own inabilities. The God, God, God's open our eyes to see our old transgression, old disobedience in us. In Acts 26, verse 18, the God is open our eyes, turn them from the darkness to light. The repentance make us open our eyes. We could see clearly to our own sinful sinfulness. At some time, my dear friends, we could see others' sin very clearly. Easily we could find others' sin very clearly. It's a very difficult to accept and see our own sinful natures. And if God is granted us repentance to us, it's a wonderful truth. We could see very clearly in our own natures. I would like to bring one example from the Old Testament. David, he sinned against. And Nathan came unto him and said, and explained to him his story. And what David did. David very clearly seen the other's sin in his life but he couldn't see what he done my dear friends we are like a David in many ways we are we know others sin very clearly and very particularly and we are failed to see the sin in us the true repentance showing how bad we are. Not only David, the prodigal son. The prodigal son, he far away from the father's house. And the one point, his mind enlightened. Clear understanding that how bad he is. And it is a great remind us, reminding, God is reminding us, my friends. We are pray and ask to the Lord, O oh Lord, open our eyes to see very clearly in our own sinfulness. If we have not seen our sinfulness, we couldn't see our Savior in our life. Therefore, we need to ask because the repentance are coming from the Lord. We need to ask and plead, O oh Lord, open our eyes. And second thing, in the sight of sin, we need to ask to the Lord to show Lord the old commandments are same. You know, we are giving some uh, higher value to the different some commandments. And we are giving a less value to the some commandments. Oh Lord, give us sight. Give us, open our eyes to see thy old commandments in the same way. 
Some people have a long sight in their vision. Some people have a long sight and some people have a short sight. That's not a good sight, isn't it? We need spectacles to see everything in a proper way. But some Christians' lives are like that. Some sins are short, short sight to us and the some sins are long sight to us. This is not a healthy vision. We need to ask to the Lord, Lord, give us, Lord, the right understanding to see thy commandments in a proper way. The some people think is LGBT is a horrible sin. That is, of course. Sabbath breaking, the same. While the creation ordinance. But we are very serious on some sin and the less serious on some sins. That's not healthy repentance. That wouldn't lead you to healthy repentance. The God very clearly says if you break one commandment, you've broken all the commandments. We are giving a high value of the human rights. Many times we forgot about the God's right. We are keeping and give a more value to the second table of the commandment. We are ignorant of the first table of the commandment. Our eyes are not very clearly open yet. We need to call and cry to the Lord. Lord, open our eyes. And the God says here, you shouldn't hide you are any of your sin. The God need to open our old sin. We shouldn't go very clearly telling us, my dear friends, do not hide any sin in you because if you are not <clears throat> kill your sin, the sin will kill you one day. Therefore, we need to ask to the Lord, the sin is a horrible thing. There's a sin will kill us. Sin will destroy us. But therefore, all of us, we need to ask to the Lord, Lord, open our eyes to see all our iniquities. It's a wonderful gift. Oh Lord, give us, Lord, thy grace to us. Second thing in our repentance, the first, we need to ask to the Lord, God, give us sight to see our sins. Second thing, this is true repentance, make us more pain or more sorrows in our heart. The sorrow means embittering of the soul in the sense when we see our sins in us, our heart need to be very sorrowful before the Lord. It's a painful should. And Zechariah said, chapter 12, verse 10, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have prayed, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, 
and shall be bitterness for him as one that is a bitterness for his firstborn. My dear friends, our sins are making us pain, the sorrow, the prickle. And Psalm 38 verse 18 says, I will be sorry for my sin. That means every sin must be make us pain. Have you experienced in your life? Have you seen pain in your life? Does the sin make you pain? Or sorrows? Or sin make you comfort and happy in your life? The true repentance will bring and make your heart will be more sorrowful and painful. I would like to remember the Apostle Peter. He was betrayed Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ Look at him. He sorrow in his heart and he wept. You see the wonderful sermon Jesus Christ preached by his eyesight. Just he looked and he has a convicted in his heart. Sorrowful and painful. You see, the Peter wasn't convinced that time. Where he was, he was staying with the enemies of Christ. After Christ looked at him and he cried out and he sorrowed and wept and he come out of the crowd. You see, this is showing the painfulness. The heart need to be pain and sorrow. Another great example the Peter preached in Acts 2. Preached Christ. What happened? Are they happy? Are they joy? Are they dancing? Are they clapping? No. Their heart was broken. Their pangs conscience. My dear friends, this is an experiential repentance. Have you had this kind of experience in your life? Have your heart was broke? And Peter said, O oh Lord, you love the broken heart. As a water comfort we have us, my dear friends. Those who are broken heart here, those who are painful heart here, the God is telling, I am here, look unto me. The sin makes sorrow. And the sorrows are two kind of sorrows. The one leads to Christ. Other sorrows away, send away from the Lord. There's a young rich ruler. He asked the question to the Lord Jesus Christ. How can I get the internal life? Jesus Christ told him. The answer he wasn't expect. He was very sorrowful. And he went away from him. But the Peter, he was sorrow. And he looked at Christ. My dear friends, all sorrows are always lead us to the Christ 
alone. Our old sorrows are. We need to bring all our sorrows to the Christ because he is the only one solution for our old sorrows. We have seen the gift of the repentance. It is coming from the Lord. The God needs to open our hearts. He will open our hearts when he gives us a repentance. We need to ask to the Lord, Lord, open our hearts, open our eyes to see. Second thing, we seen that God is making us sorrow in our heart through our repentance. No sorrows, there is no repentance. No pain, there is no gain. We have to be very clear on this point. We need to ask to the Lord, Lord, grant us sorrow in our life. Paul, he was on the way to Damascus. What is Christ asking him? Paul, it's not paining you. You are kick against the bricks. You are a sinner, Paul. Why you didn't receive any pain in your heart? I'm asking, my dear friend, those who are not experience pain in your heart. Why? You are against Lord. You are breaking commandments day after day and hour after hour and minute after minute and the second after second. So why? There's a no tears in your eyes. Why? Ask to the Lord. Lord, something wrong in us, Lord. So why, Lord, our eyes not open yet? Why, Lord, my heart is not broken yet? Don't leave, Lord, until he give you the repentance. Follow him and plead him and cry unto him. He is a merciful God. He will give you if you ask genuinely to him. Third thing, the sin is, must make us pain. And third one, sin must make us shame. Sin does not make us, sin doesn't make you shame. You are still in a darkness. Do you feel shame before God? Your sins make the Jesus shame. Why Jesus Christ was shamed? Because his people sin. The sin always makes shame. But again, God is telling through this repentance, if God is giving the repentance to us, we make, we feel shame before Lord. Jeremiah 6 verse 15 says, Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No. Only the people of God's people will be ashamed of their sin. I seen in this Western world the many people are half naked. They didn't feel shame. They feel very happy and joy. Our parents, they were feel shame. They were naked and they go they run away and hide themselves. They feel naked and feel shame. But nowadays you can see the people are half naked. It's no shame. That's a wicked people cannot be shamed before the Lord. There's a Zechariah 
chapter 3 verse 5 says the unjust no no shame my dear friends i'm asking you a simple question in the sagaraya chapter 3 verse 5 is it relevant to you or not i sagaraya chapter 3 verse 5 is it relevant to you all or not because every single sin need to be make us shake before god it is a great example of the prodigal son he said i'm not worthy to be a son again any more it's make him very shame what he did in his life the david the nathan told to david the water man what david said is david is looking for a sword to kill nathan no shut his mouth the david's boil blood was boiled when he telling to see other sin and now god said you are the man all the boiling bloods are harmed down all the boiling bloods are harmed down he feel shame before the lord psalm 51 as a beautifully prescribe how shame he was my dear friends every sin so make us shame otherwise we are not able to repent before the lord the next one we are going to see the hate sin that every sin make us shame at the meantime the repentance are involved after god is giving us repentance after repentance we hate sin in automatically is a naturally the god is giving us spirit to fight against the sin the repentance make us holy hate sin is a healthy sanctification of the god's ways i hate sin he is holy therefore we have to be holy as him my dear friends we have to hate all our sins some people do have a favorite sin in their life everybody have some favorite sins the god telling you you have to hate all your favorite sins all your sins not most of them not 99% of sin but the 100% of the sin you have to hate that's a healthy and beautiful things in our life are you ready to hate all of your sins are you willing to give up give all of your sins and we have to hate the sin because of the spiritual reason sometimes we do hate the sin because of some other reasons you know there's uh, some sins are making uh, people embarrass or that what these people will think you know we are for the different many reasons we are stop sinning or oh, this is not good for our health this is not core of our witness you know this is not good for uh, good for our such a such a reason no we have to hate sin because 
our lord hates sin for the spiritual reason we have to hate sin not for any other reasons then when we hate sin our whole heart that need to be work and bible says that the judah she was halfly repent half heartedly repent the bible is fully against the half hearted whole hearted always we need to repent from our old sin the hate old sin with the whole heartedly hates and my friends we all sin we have to hate all our sins we have to hate for the spiritual reasons we have to hate with the all hearted heartedly and we have to hate all time everywhere we are sometime we hate sin in the church and we when we are with the friends we love sin at the home we hate some sins we love sins with our friends wherever we live we change and we change all the standards but wherever we live we have to hate sin that's a great example is a J- uh, joseph there's nobody there in their home he says i am fear of the lord he is looking unto me my dear friend you see he hates he he always hates sin wherever he lives and me and you need to be same as joseph we fear god his presence is everywhere he is looking us all the time if it is sin in my home it is sin everywhere it is sin in my church that's a sin in everywhere it is sin in my room is sin is everywhere the sin is we have to fear the lord and hate sin all our life and everywhere and finally i would like to bring attention there's a god make us confess the christ jesus christ he confess all our sin on behalf of us christ ask forgiveness for us and the forgiveness and the confession is a very very important to our life and when we the when we confess our sins before the lord there is a something should be involved in our confess in our confessions it's the first thing we have to acknowledge i sinned before the there is a wonderful thing in our confession of confession is we have to feel and make make sure i am the reason for our own sin psalm 51 says i am the reason i am sin against thee i did sin david never blame anyone else david never blame bathsheba he never blame anyone he says lord i am the man i did sin then the prodigal son he came to his father and said i sinned against the heaven that's all we don't need to see any other reason 
there's no any excuses we shouldn't hide anything but the one thing we have to know we are the responsibility for our own sin but therefore we need to confess to the lord lord i did sin my mother convinced conceived me in a sinful as in her womb then second thing my dear friends the confession must be voluntarily we need to confess to the lord no nobody need to force us no any other reasons voluntarily willingly we need to confess our sin to the lord why because god is god will be very pleased to see your confession in in the matthew in the luke chapter 15 says in heaven will be more rejoice when the one person repent from their sin young people i am telling you and challenging you maybe your minister wouldn't happy to you confess your sin to the lord maybe your parents wasn't happy that but the one thing the god is looking forward and very pleased to see your confession he will be really glad to see your confession of sin but therefore we sinned i sinned and voluntarily we need to confess our sins to the lord not to be shamed to confess there's a no shameness to confess is a not repent, not confess is a shame make you shame the david he did sin in 51 50 uh, 51 psalm says he write uh, his confession of his repentance the uh, confession and write it down and give it to the asap the chief musician you see how foolish i was he's a courage man me and you can sin like a david we can do more than david but we can't repent like him we need to ask to the lord o oh lord give us lord thy spirit to repent like a david ask he never shame to confess he never fear anyone to confess only he fear lord he confessed to the lord voluntarily nobody is forcing him nathan not say you have to ask forgiveness to the lord you are the man that's all he realized he need to confess to the lord at the confession the next thing the seeking a right place the many people are under the conviction of sin but they don't know where should they go judas carried he was under conviction but he never been to the jesus christ the peter he was under conviction he confessed his faith to the lord jesus christ my dear friend we need to see the right place to confess that is on the cross there's no any other way there's no any other place to confess jesus christ is the only one mediator between man and the lord but therefore there's the only one place to confess we have to confess all our sin to lord jesus christ and either another thing when we under the conviction the god is open our eyes to see our own inabilities and sin make a shame and hate hatreds of sin and the god is telling us you have to immediately repent from your sin don't postpone 
your confession. I think I would like to bring one Old Testament event. In Joshua chapter 7, the Israelites, they were shamed before the A. And Joshua is praying unto the Lord, Lord, why? The Lord said, Joshua, get thee up, quick, don't be late. You have to do something, Joshua. This is not a time to cry, and this is not a time to cry. Get thee up, immediately get up. And again, Lord says, 7.12, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed, neither will I be with you anymore, except he destroy the cursed from among you. What is Christ says here? What is Lord says here? Joshua, now I am with you. Without me, you can't repent. This is the time. If you are not repent, I will take my present out of. You, out of. If I take my hand, you can't repent. That's what the Lord says. I will be with you anymore. That means now I am with you. With my help, immediately confess and destroy your cursed among you. My dear friends, the God gave you the wonderful chance today to destroy your cursed thing. Get thee up. Don't say any excuse. Don't waste your time. Immediately get thee up and confess all your sin because now I am with you. Shall we pray? Almighty and never blessed loving God. O oh Lord, we are humbly asking to send thy spirit to our hearts and revive our hearts. Give us, Lord, true repentance in our life. O oh Lord, what a privilege to be repent unto thee. Give us thy spirit to every one of us here. All of us need to repent from our all sins. Grant thy spirit. Give us, Lord, courage to confess our all sin before thee. O Lord, we are remembering thou art hate sin all the time. But we are, Lord, love sin all the time. Break our hearts. Make us shame. Make us faithful in our heart. O oh Lord, grant thy spirit to repent from our old sin. We ask these things through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name's sake.